Okay, I hope we're live. Uh, let's have a little feedback on the sound, folks, and on the video. It's good to see you. Der Stiefel, thank you for being early. And uh, got a few other viewers who were silent, but uh, chip in and let's have a discussion. So a couple of things uh, to get started. Um, this is my new setup. Uh, I've moved my live streaming setup from uh, home, uh, from the office rather, and to my home. So we can have a little more uh, structure and uh, peace, hopefully. But I do have to tell you, I have a, a dog uh, in the other room that may go ballistic at any moment. And uh, we will try to control that as best we can. And um, so I've been off the air for uh, quite a while. I've uh, jumped in on Craig's show by Skype a couple of times and uh, otherwise have been uh, consumed. If you look at my uh, thumbnail for this uh, video, uh, you can see me looking a little scruffy. I spent November uh, uh, entertaining COVID and uh, stayed in my room for about five weeks and uh, survived it okay and uh, then hit the holiday season at work and uh, pretty much no extra time to uh, do anything uh, but uh, take care of customers and uh, and business so hopefully back in the groove and uh, if everything is uh, uh, copacetic with the setup uh, then uh, we're going to be good to go uh, I'll be fine-tuning it as we go along. Uh, I think the lighting can needs, needs a little bit of work, camera position and whatever. And uh, we will hopefully have a, a good time. So, Carlos, hi. Uh, good to see you. And Triforce, Happy New Year to you as well. And uh, another year for me to kick everyone's ass. Well, I don't know about that. I think sometimes you kick mine. But uh, as, uh, as, 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 so be it. So um, I have uh, a little bit of news. I'm not sure uh, I'm supposed to share, but uh, I think uh, I have to make an executive decision here. Um, I set this up uh, knowing that Craig is out of town and he did text me uh, after I had scheduled this that uh, regrettably his father uh, passed away early in the morning. And so he's out of town and obviously grieving and uh, we send our condolences. I'm sure you all do as well. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some news about uh, when he's going to return and uh, what the arrangements are. So uh, we're very sad to hear that news. And uh, we will try to carry on a bit for him uh, in his absence. And uh, our thoughts were with, are with him indeed. So, um, okay, getting back to the chat here. Um, Kyle Jet is here, Blue, um, and uh, yep, and yep, COVID met Steve and uh, COVID 19. Well, not really, not really, it was not a good thing. And uh, so I see people are recognizing uh, you know, Craig's situation. So, yes, we all do send our condolences. So, um, with that, I'm going to sort of forge ahead with uh, what I had thought of going uh, with today. Um, sort of reflecting back on uh, the last year, uh, sort of a difficult year for many people. Uh, very challenging in uh, our business in some respects. We had, uh, uh, a store was closed to the public for about five weeks in the spring. Uh, fortunately, a lot of our loyal customers uh, did call in by phone and uh, um, over the internet, and we uh, had a, uh, a dip for our second quarter. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, actually, the watch buyers uh, seem to have nothing else to do during the year, being uh, confined at home, and um, we. Uh, uh, benefited in some respects because uh, dollars that might have gone to a cruise or something did come uh, through to luxury uh, watch retailers. It was not just us, but uh, pretty much in the industry, uh, luxury uh, independence 
such as uh, ourselves, uh, generally did well. And uh, so uh, overall, the year was uh, personally difficult and challenging um, and uh, uh, benefited, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, the luxury end of the market. While we know that a lot of people uh, uh, did uh, have a pretty tough time, especially those uh, in uh, the food industry and uh, uh, some of the other industries that were uh, really struck and, of course, a lot of personal tragedies. So um, other things that we uh, experienced during the year, obviously, we had no uh, major watch events uh, such as Basel World and uh, releases of watches were uh, very uh, fragmented, fragmented and spasmodic. Uh, without the usual uh, lineup and uh, release over a uh, scheduled uh, time period. So um, uh, things were a little uh, confused in that sense. And uh, we did ex experience a lot of delays in delivery of promised uh, pieces. And a lot of that was attributable to uh, uh, disruptions in the supply chain. And uh, maybe just one part was missing for a watch that was due out, and uh, that uh, might have delayed it for a couple of months. So um, that uh, was one of the, the, the features that uh, we uh, contended with and customers did as well. So uh, that uh, was pretty much the year. And uh, catching up with... Uh, the folks, uh, our wags, um, thank you for my, my looking good. It's probably because I lost 15 pounds for the COVID thing. And yes, we are uh, very saddened by Craig's father. And he did a good job raising that guy. Um, and uh, I'm sure he was proud of him. And uh, Dave Williams in the car, hi. And Derek Chelly. And... Uh, uh, no, I'm not in Craig's home. I, you missed the beginning of it, Craig, uh, Derek. I've set up in my home. Um, I'm, try, I'm moving my live streaming operation uh, to my man cave here, which you're seeing the back of, and uh, are going to try it here. It was a little too disruptive in the store to uh, uh, close the door and expect uh, quiet and uh, a reasonable time to do these uh, shows. So. We're going to try it here, but honestly, I'm probably going to do a uh, duplicate setup in the store for when we are able to uh, host guests and uh, in person and whatever. So that's, I've left uh, part of the setup there. I'll probably get another switcher and uh, uh, be doing uh, shows from both. And also, probably a little later, as we are doing today, um, Craig had suggested that, that some of the folks... Uh, um, at least uh, toward the uh, west and uh, in the Pacific, I've uh, missed some shows. And I know we're cutting off the guys in Europe a bit or making them stay up later, but uh, we're going to try this for a while. And uh, Craig will probably maintain his uh, earlier schedule. And uh, Carlos is asking, yes, I, I have been able to set up the studio. Um, it's looking pretty good. And... Uh, uh, pretty organized. I've had to get a new computer and a few other things, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the layout. So, uh, okay, Der Stiefel is asking if I can put a bug in Grand Seiko's ear. Love to see another display case back of a 9F watch. Okay, I will uh, put a bug, but uh, it's sometimes tough to find that ear. Um, uh, we work through our U.S. Uh, uh, representatives and leadership, and uh, they then uh, need to communicate with uh, the folks in Japan. We don't do that directly. So uh, it looks like some of the things are uh, uh, trickling through. Uh, interest in um, thinner uh, wat movements and watches uh, seems to be coming about, and... Uh, uh, some of the other uh, points that folks have made, and uh, I think uh, they're listening. Certainly the demand for Grand Seiko has been uh, astronomical, and uh, people have criticized their, their marketing and other methods, but whatever it is they're doing, 
has certainly opened up the brand to many, many more people than, uh, say, just two years ago. So, and uh, <laughs> Carlos congratulating me on how amazed, how co complex the, the setup seemed. Well, it gets complex when you want to have multiple cameras, that's for sure. And uh, um, I've, I have actually simplified a little bit um, in terms of my sound. You see, I've got these little uh, uh, earphones on, these Apple things. My uh, turns out my uh, source for getting the sound is a little far away. So you see the thing jiggling. We got to get a longer string or something like that, longer cord. Okay. And Derek asked me, uh, "Do I own more than one dog?" No, I have one dog. I would like to get another companion for it. Uh, my wife is, has not uh, bought in yet. Uh, it is a Shiba Inu. For those of you who know the brand, they are uh, tough little buggers. Um, they, uh, you say come and they go. And uh, the dog does uh, have a lot of cat-like behaviors. Uh, comes to get uh, her head scratched. And the minute she's done, she just uh, takes off and doesn't know you. And... Uh, but a lot of fun, up to a lot of mischief and uh, pretty active, but does get into barking fits, which may shut me down if uh, she comes near my door here. So, uh, uh, Triforce Rich uh, asks if I'm wearing pants. Well, that's a very personal question. Uh, I did think about uh, sitting in the briefs, uh, but uh, I may have to get up and do an errand in front of you all, so I'm not going to do that right yet. And... Uh, Tom Austin asks, where do I see Grand Seiko in five years? Uh, well, um, everything has a, a life I've found in this business. We, we're really uh, at a, a peak moment uh, and we hope it's not a bubble. Um, the brand is uh, releasing a lot of pieces. People are really starting to recognize what it's about. It's, uh, to us, the complete package, the dial, the finish on the cases, the movement. You can see the movement as you can in uh, our uh, famous uh, brand with a crown on it um, and highly accurate. And so if you want a really balanced, uh, well-finished, uh, interesting piece, um, it's going to be Grand Seiko. I do hope they will follow up with some of the refinements that I just mentioned, uh, such as uh, thinner uh, pieces. And uh, they definitely have to address some of the concerns about uh, the bracelets that do not have fine adjustment. And uh, uh, they've achieved that in some of their new pieces uh, and they need to do that in um, the dress line as well. Um, so, uh, very committed company. They've uh, expanded their plant. I don't think uh, we've covered this on our show, but uh, certainly they have in their uh, promotions. They've opened a new, uh, much larger factory. They're bringing in and training more staff, and uh, hopefully they'll maintain their quality and the keep up with the volume demands. Uh, we are seeing occasional shortages for the um, more desired pieces. And uh, if uh, the demand continues, uh, they really have to do a little catch up there. Uh, I would hope also that uh, uh, a little bit of catch up on the spare parts. Uh, sometimes we wait for months for uh, a replacement deployment or something like that. So uh, those are some of the things I'm hoping for. Um, the brand has... Uh, uh, you know, a, a deep, deep uh, uh, corporate environment it's uh, couched in. So I think it's uh, financially strong enough and certainly has the backing of uh, the top people in the, in the company. So uh, back into the chat here. Um, uh, dear Stiefel, those dogs are great. And... Uh, Tom Austin Shiba Inu is a dog brand. Uh, yeah, it is a dog brand. And uh, we actually uh, saw them when we were in Japan in 2017 uh, at the guests of Grand Seiko. We saw them all over the place and 
decided uh, that we would pick one up. Uh, somehow the Japanese have a way of being able to train them a little better than we have. Uh, this dog runs us, but uh, when you go around Japan, the dogs are daintily following the owner on the leash and uh, seem very polite and well behaved, and we haven't achieved that yet. Um, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> the Triforce herd I've given up on watches, just content with my collection. Uh, not, not quite yet. Um, and, oh, that's, uh, oh, this is for Tom, uh, for, okay, directed to Tom, and he's done. Uh, we all have ups and downs in any hobby, but this time it's lasted so long, it's pretty obvious that the passion has dwindled. Sorry to hear that, uh, Tom. And, uh, and, okay, Blue is wearing his Grand Seiko Winter. And T Triforce is shocked at Tom's uh, revelation and uh, not sure to congratulate or not for getting out. Well, I hope you'll still stay in the, uh, uh, as a visitor in the streams. And uh, I think that ties with status, luxury, and general douchebaggery probably did the hobby in. Yeah, I think there are some elements of that that uh, can get tiring for sure. And uh, Booser blames Hodinky. That's an interesting observation. And Carlos is quite done too. Uh, doesn't have a desire for a new one. This is bad, uh, boating bad for, for us. Uh, Tom Austin does the Shiba Inu smile. Yes, she does. When you're giving her a scratch and she lies on her back, she gets a big grin. And sometimes mimicking a grin that uh, we might be giving the dog. It's a cute little feature of the dog. And, uh, okay. And Triforce doesn't have an urge to spend obscene amounts of money anymore. Likes to stop in and chat with you guys. It still supports Steve's business. Thank you. I appreciate it. And our wags, what are our top five selling watch brands? Well, Grand Seiko, definitely. Omega, definitely. Um, this may surprise you, but Seiko, regular Seiko, is doing great. Um, and up to and including uh, the limited edition dive watches in the $6,000 class, which uh, often get pilloried for their price in the uh, blogs, and uh, believe me, they do sell. And they've been coming out with some great inventive new things. Um, and I actually have a little funny piece I can throw up here. Um, let me remember how to switch my thing here. So this is a this is a Seiko Five uh, entry level. And they're doing this series, a Street Fighter series, and this is these are very inexpensive. Uh, Four fifty. This is uh, uh, called the Naruto Naruto and Boruto collaboration. And it's a Rock Lee uh, uh, piece, and it's highlighting what I want to talk about a little bit: uh, the fact that uh, green is the new blue, and uh, last year. Uh, the prior year, blue was the new black, and we have many, many uh, pieces among our brands that are uh, in green. So uh, this is just an example. So I digress. Um, back into the uh, question. Um, Seiko is doing extremely well. Uh, we do very well with Aris. Um, also, believe it or not, G-Shock uh, uh, has... Uh, an extreme demand for certain models. We have them online and people are, are bailing them as uh, quickly as they can get them. And we do well uh, with our Bramants and uh, just uh, a variety of the brands, long jeans. So, uh, but clearly uh, Grand Seiko is right now uh, our top selling brand. And uh, as you might know, we uh, jumped into Breitling uh, shortly before I got taken out by COVID. 
and uh, they're represented here with a nice green piece as well. Um, and they're starting to come on for us as well. And let me get that. So this doesn't look as green as it is. And this is a uh, uh, Avenger 45 millimeter uh, night mission uh, in titanium with uh, DLC finish, a really cool uh, uh, chronograph and a uh, big piece, but not as heavy as you might think. Uh, nice fabric uh, uh, strap and excellent piece all around. So we're really, uh, we're digging into the Breitling uh, and, and learning the line and uh, customers are finding us and uh, that's an example of one of their they're larger pieces, uh, 47 millimeter, 45 millimeter rather. Um, comes in at uh, 6,035. So, and, okay. Uh, let's go up. What's the, okay, let's, uh, I have to go back in the chat here a bit. Um, Okay, Grand Seiko should make more proprietary rubber straps for their sports models. Yeah, they should uh, in, indeed have a wider choice of uh, straps, and straps are a little hard to come by. Uh, replacement straps, as I mentioned, the uh, extra parts uh, situation is, uh, is tight. We're usually waiting at least a month or two for any replacement. And... Uh, What's the hottest uh, Grand Seiko on the market right now? Well, the uh, Snowflake is the perennial uh, bestseller. In fact, the Snowflake uh, is the best-selling item of any kind in our store uh, for the last 20 years. And that includes uh, beads from the Pandora collection and uh, whatever. So that is sort of a given. That's the the bedrock. Uh, but aside from that, the uh, spring from the Seasons collection is uh, uh, very hot. Uh, they immediately sell out. We get several. Uh, we're, seems like we're getting them also every week. And they're almost always spoken for uh, uh, as soon as the uh, package arrives with them. So uh, that's one to keep your eye on as well. Uh, also, the SBGM221. A conventional mechanical movement GMT with a cream dial and a uh, beautiful box uh, crystal is uh, a very strong seller as well, but it doesn't approach the uh, spring uh, by any means. Okay, uh, let me get back into you're getting ahead of me with this. Um, Do I have any top secret info on new Grand Seiko models coming in 21? Uh, I don't. Um, we got a notice, a non-specific notice about a uh, Grand Seiko summit that we're supposed to attend, and that's probably virtual summit. And it was supposedly going to be at the end of this month. Uh, I haven't heard any more specifics on it. And if there's anything top secret, I'm really bound not to reveal it, but I don't have any insider uh, poop at the moment on, on any of it. And uh, I'm awaiting the final uh, call on that uh, the summit that uh, we are uh, supposedly going to be attending. And, uh, okay. With the new politics in the U.S., we must go underground and prepare for next time. Uh, yeah, we will talk about politics here. And uh, Booster likes the Brian May version of the uh, Seiko 5 uh, collection. That, um, we got about 10 pieces of that, and I had over 200 inquiries on that piece. Really neat. I wanted to keep one myself, but I just couldn't. Everybody wanted it. 
and uh, Triforce uh, seems to know the Rock Lee anime character and uh, color scheme is green with some orange well that's what that uh, piece is and uh, yeah this whole uh, series is five watches in that uh, series the uh, street fighters and uh, they're all very colorful very well done and uh, uh, pretty whimsical and uh, very reasonably priced and tom austin with a 40 millimeter grand seiko uh, sd diver tempt you away from the sub kyle jet kyle's probably seen that i know he's been to the boutique so um I'd like to hear that answer as well. Kyle, you still on? And uh, their steeple, since I'm so short, I always have to take my long jeans to the tailor and get them hemmed. Ha ha. Funny guy. Okay. Ah, Steve, do you still experience any effects from your COVID? Um, maybe a little vagueness uh, from time to time, which is one of the effects. Uh, I had a dry cough for a long time, about uh, a month after I got past the uh, viral part of it, and uh, transient headaches, uh, like really transient, 30-second uh, headaches, and they've dissipated, and uh, I think uh, my recall has suffered a little bit. Um, and that's probably an age thing too but uh, uh, i was lucky i didn't lose my sense of taste or smell um, and uh, the most dramatic symptom uh, at the onset was uh, severe uh, uh, pretty severe muscle pain like someone was cranking up all the muscles and nerves in my back and uh, almost in a spasm kind of thing and then uh, went into the uh, distress in the lungs but that was my first sign of it so uh, I understand a lot of people have uh, really long-lasting symptoms and uh, hopefully I'm not one of those and back into the watches uh, ah, this is Kyle answering about the Rolex it could depending upon the clasp uh, I'd rather make a watch like Rich's but slightly smaller with a snowflake dial basically a snowflake in the 37 millimeter range. That's right, Kyle likes the uh, smaller watches, uh, sub 40. And uh, the booster asked, did I make the thumbnail for this video yourself? No offense, it kind of looks like a mugshot. Well, sort of intentional. This is my, uh, after five weeks in the room, uh, and no shaving, um, sort of my, Coda for 2020 uh, shot. Yeah, I sort of wanted to let it lay out there a little bit. So yeah, this is my personal mug shot. And ah, Carlos has retaken his love for fountain pens. Already had several, but I got some new more. As I can see, little treasury cells, Montegrappa, but I can only see ballpoint pens. Well, uh, we also uh, have... Uh, uh, fountain pens in those same models as well and we don't really have an up-to-date representation on our website so we need to do that so interesting Carlos I have a uh, very nice local customer who is uh, a huge huge pen guy I mean like a, a noted world noted or you know US noted guy and he's swinging back into watches with us so uh, you can go uh, back and forth between those uh, two hobbies. And this is an interesting topic that I had s sort of thought of uh, bringing up with folks, uh, the cycle of collecting. And uh, uh, I've gone through those myself. Uh, uh, fishing, fishing gear, fly fishing gear, the, you know, the acquisition desire for this reel, that reel, this rod, that rod, this stiffness this length etc uh, I've sort of gotten into it with photography here mm -hmm. and uh, we all go through these enthusiasms and 
then you sort of grow out of it and uh, then maybe dip back in again over time. So uh, hopefully you all don't abandon us on the watches, but uh, uh, if you do, we can sell you a faux pay bracelet. And by the way, um, how's that uh, doing there, Stiefel? Are you still wearing your, your faux pay? Is that uh, working out when you're out on duty? So uh, let's hear about that. Okay, um, following up further, uh, any chance Seiko will revert uh, the monster back to its traditional case and bracelet? That I don't have any insight on. Uh, much prefers the general two monsters over the current gen, uh, generation four. Um, we have virtually no uh, behind the scenes insight into what's going on with Seiko the way we do to a certain degree with Grand Seiko. So that I just don't know. And uh, what do I think of Seiko's new type of steel called Ever Brilliant Steel? Well, it is very bright and it is supposedly more resistant to corrosion and uh, more resistant to scratching. So uh, don't have much experience with uh, in the field or uh, feedback from customers one way or the other, uh, actually. And uh, yeah, okay, dear Steve, for mentioning uh, Chris, uh, our uh, long-standing uh, good associate. Chris has been really stepping out with his uh, YouTube reviews of uh, watches uh, that we have here in the store, and he's really gotten into some uh, number one, the reviews are really good and uh, cover a lot of uh, aspects uh, in detail that uh, some of the other reviewers don't. And uh, even has his pretty frank opinion of pieces uh, uh, at the conclusion of them. But he's been doing some outrageously interesting things with his uh, uh, introductions. And I will... Uh, when I finish this one up, I'll uh, post a couple of links if you haven't been able to see them on the bottom of uh, this, uh, uh, this stream. And you ought to take a look. Uh, he's uh, had a hidden talent that we didn't know he had that's been uh, on showcase for the past couple of months. Okay, so Boozer has, uh, yeah, Chris was knighted recently as a reward for his good work. Yeah, that's, that's a classic that he just did. Um, and their Stiefel has never grown out of collecting women's phone numbers. <laughs> Very good. And uh, Booser, uh, heard of people bringing donuts and flowers into Rolex AD in the hopes of gaining favor with them. Did anyone bring in bribes for a chance to buy the Brian May SKX? Uh, not for that one. It's probably a little... Uh, to uh, most of those were uh, people uh, texting in or uh, emailing in, and we didn't really have a chance to talk with them. But uh, some of the uh, omegas that are being released, we definitely had people. Uh, you know, what can I do? How can I get uh, higher in the list? You know, and of course we uh, don't uh, take those bribes. And. Uh, How was the availability of new man on the F moon? Um, not, not particularly available. Um, things are very slow in the uh, limited uh, availability production omegas. I will learn later. Uh, we did have a meeting uh, with our rep set for this week, but he ended up in quarantine himself. So. Uh, I'll probably touch bases with them in a couple of weeks and get uh, uh, some inside uh, insights from them then. Uh, when is producer Michael and Steve doing a show together? Uh, well, you'll have to introduce us. Uh, you think we'd be a good fit, uh, uh, Derek? And uh, Triforce Rich. Uh, Steve, do you and Linda have... Air have heirs you plan on passing the store down to? Well, uh, it's definitely something we uh, are, are looking into. Uh, we don't have a, a clear plan or pathway right now. 
if uh, one of you out there would like to become one of our heirs, uh, certainly entertain that. Uh, sounds like you might be interested, Triforce, but I don't know if you're willing to move, uh, move east. And uh, make sure Chris doesn't get headhunted by Watchbox or Odinky. Well, yep, we'll put a collar on him. And uh, good question, Carlos. Steve, have you seen a new Snoopy come in yet? Totally awesome. Love the back of the watch. It sounds like you've seen one in person. We haven't. Okay, I think uh, they might be coming out of their boutiques, uh, but uh, we haven't gotten any of our copies yet. And uh, Blue is willing to move east. Yeah, we're always looking for good talent. If uh, you really know watches, you're uh, techno technologically savvy, uh, love people, uh, give us a hoot. Uh, who knows? And uh, okay, <laughs> Uncle Steve, I'll take over the store. Ha ha. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be pretty good at it there, Stiefel, and definitely you'd be good on the uh, security end. Okay, so uh, rattling on here, um, let me show you another watch or two. And uh, Triforce, the fight, will Little Treasury be greater than Helen of Troy? There will be tales, whoops, you're getting a lot of, there will be tales of the fight told to children in different galaxies during the space exploration days. Whoa, epic. Me and producer Michael had the same car, his first car, yellow seat 127. The car thing stopped there. Okay, Carl Carlos, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen too much of producer Michael. I may have to catch up on him and see what's going on. Uh, recommended, guys? So let's, let's see what else I can throw in front of you. Um, this is getting a little protracted. So, okay, here's another, another piece which we will bring up and uh, let me get her set up. And, okay, so this is another green dial that, that you know, this, and that's looking very pale in my intense lighting. And this is a Mula Glass Huta uh, TerraSport 4 in bronze. And it's a limited edition piece of 250 and uh, goes for uh, 2099. And again, so we have a light green here, light green dial. And uh, Nice piece indeed, and uh, pretty reasonably priced from a nice German brand that we carry, Mule Glas Huta. Okay, and ah, so Boozer is, I guess, back in the sales thing. What's more important, watch knowledge or being a deft salesman? Uh, I think uh, you need to. Definitely no watches. Uh, we uh, certainly want to add uh, value to our customers, although many of them on particular brands know a lot more than we do because they've devoted uh, more time than we can to any particular brand. Um, and I am not sure deaf salesmen is what uh, we're looking for. We are looking for people who enjoy people and uh, want to get the right watch on the right wrist rather than being deaf. Okay, so Wrench Gang Treasury. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yo, Craig Word. Okay, so have I ever encountered a situation where uh, I refused to sell a person a watch? Perhaps you knew they were being uh, in a tricky financial situation or being very irresponsible. Um, I think. Uh, we have urged people to slow down. Um, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, say people in the first year of collecting who uh, start going ways such as, oh, well, I, um, I have a three hand watch and now I need a, a chronograph and now I need a moon phase and 
and sort of collecting randomly like that. And uh, I definitely uh, suggest that they slow down and uh, figure out what they appreciate. They, maybe they've bought four or five watches and uh, we encourage them to uh, take it easy. Um, financial situation uh, where they've been irresponsible, not so much. Um, I have refused to sell people that uh, uh, have made uh, sort of inappropriate demands and, uh, you know, I always get 30% off from my dealers and, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, sometimes our chemistry doesn't work and I have refused uh, in that case. I'm not, I'm not getting your comments totally here. Y'all ain't playing. And okay. Pelosi's dentures are very interesting. And okay. Something Pelosi's dentures. No, it's been. Okay, so let's show another watch. That's what, what we're going to go to next. I am going to roll out this beautiful Okay, this is another green piece, and I am have to rearrange my watch showing thing. I have to rotate too much to get to it, looks like. And let's see. So uh, we have the Grand Seiko SBGJ239. Uh, beautiful piece, green dial. Again, a little washed out with my setup here. Um, we'll need to that light down a bit which I can't easily do uh, sapphire bezel uh, beautiful piece on a strap been a very uh, been a strong seller for something at that uh, price point and uh, very nice what do you think and back to the questions <laughs> they're steeple on financially irresponsible um it means they don't have any more credit left on the card that's when it's time to open another line of credit uh, -huh. uh we don't encourage that actually um we like we do like to sell them it's within people's means and um okay so Triforce. If someone showed up to Little Treasury with an obvious engagement ring, I air the wife's ring, and tried to quickly trade it into you for a watch, what are the protocols there? That has never happened. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have had people bring back engagement rings for various reasons. Um, the woman, usually from a divorce situation, a guy who's been turned down. We have never taken an engagement ring in trade for a watch, I'm pretty sure. So, okay, so Trashy Larry is here talking with Lance. And uh, anything to move? Okay, not, not part of this discussion with these guys. So, all right. Um, we are almost there, I think. Uh, it's almost getting to my dinner time, and I don't know about you folks. So uh, it's been fun to be back, uh, for sure. And uh, hopefully I am going to uh, be able to do this more regularly. And uh, that is uh, my plan and uh, my pledge. And I'm happy you all showed up and uh, 
we'll do some more of that. So meanwhile, uh, do try to look at some of our uh, reviews that our uh, friend Chris has done. If you go to our website, littletreasury.com, and uh, go to the blogs section, I think we posted most of them, um, and that'll uh, route you over to YouTube to see them. Uh, they're really very interesting. And uh, the one he did recently on uh, the uh, Vermont uh, piece is, uh, is priceless. And, uh, okay, I'm being warned about Trashy Larry. Uh, uh, Steve, if someone comes back to return a ring after getting shut down, how well does that go over? Has to be an awkward or embarrassing situation for the buyer and for us as well. Um, it's uh, never pretty. Uh, and uh, we did have one case where um, uh, the gentleman came back and actually broke down in tears uh, in front of my wife, Linda. Uh, and he had been turned down and he, the agreement was that uh, uh, she would sell it for him on consignment but uh, she didn't she put it in a safe she had an intuition and he came back a couple of months later and said do you still have the ring uh, she's going to accept and uh, she had it there in the safe he took it back they got married uh, not the end of the story, but uh, that was that suffice for the moment anyway. So, uh, and his indentured servitude an acceptable form of payment. If a very eager young man such as Lance wanted to sell his labor for a nice grand Seiko, would this be acceptable? Um, yeah, if he had the skills and he had to uh, he'd fit in, uh, definitely. Uh, would, would endanger him for a period. And Derek's not ready for dinner here. I'm sorry. I know this is a time difference. And, uh, okay. Uh, Tom says, thanks for the show. Hopefully see you again soon. And uh, with that, I think I am going to cut out. Thank you all. And again, our uh, sincere condolences uh, to Craig, who, uh, if you join us late, uh, lost his father uh, early in the morning, and uh, uh, we're very uh, sad to hear that. And uh, you know, uh, our condolences to him and his family. Okay, so I am uh, cutting off. Thank you again.